What is up my ninjas and welcome to my most fun and unfun of 2020. So 2020 was trying, but I figured I'm gonna do some fun stuff for me to just, you know, finish this off. I waited till everyone else was done as always, and here we are. And I'm handing this one over to uh, Akiba Red because it's been a while. And he always, you know, he represents what I love about action figures and he's making friends already. Um, there, there, there's something about a cool looking figure that just makes you pay attention and makes you kind of lose yourself in the figure and just kind of geek out, you know? It's, it brings us back to like when we were kids and, and it's, it's why we still collect figures, you know, many of us, you know, not the bandwagoners, not the biters, I'm talking about the real action figure enthusiasts who don't need to buy whatever the flavor of the month is. This Peely you see here, this is my son's Peely, he's a huge fan of these figures, but you know, he brings out that fun that, you know, drew us to collecting figures. And I love seeing that, you know, in new figures. So props to Jazzwares for that. And that's why I decided to go back and bring out Akiba Red, because despite the flaws of these figures, I still love them and they're fun to play with. Unlike what I'm gonna start with here. Before anybody attacks me, before anybody says anything, always remember with my uh, lists, it's always what I purchased in the previous year it's not what it's not limited to what just came out that year so don't even bother mentioning that in the comments because like I said I mean it should be obvious at this point because you've been watching my videos for a little while but if this is your first time keep that in mind I always confine my videos my lists to what I bought the year in question so without further ado here we go So with this guy here, I love what NECA's been doing, but I wanted the effect to be the gimmick for the figure. You get what I'm saying? Give me a full foot soldier and then give me the piece to make him look like this. Having him stuck like this kind of sucks. I'm just being honest. And I had a, I had a feeling at first that they were going to do it like this. Um, and, and what really made it suck is I'm looking at that wire and the plastic around it and you know the more you bend it The more it warps the more crap pops up and you see how hard it is to get these guys and You would have expected them to do something to make this so you can still army build You know each one of your foot soldiers will actually add to your ranks, but nope instead. He's just a prop I don't really like that Now this one I know will come as a surprise to a lot of people because I absolutely adore the movie figures, but QC, loose joints, you know, that sort of shit is what put him on this list. I would stand him up and then five seconds later his knee would buckle and he'd fall the fuck over. And yes, I know, you can pour wax, floor wax in there, you could pour, or floor polish, I'm sorry, or you could use nail polish, clear nail polish super glue any number of things but you should not have to and for the insane prices that these things go for on the secondary it you, you no absolutely not and i pre-ordered this so mine was fresh out the box and this is how he's been so mm. now this is the uh halo what do they call them spartan collection six inch master chief now i had kind of high hopes for this guy because i liked the mattel line but the mattel line got shat on by like a lot of supposed halo fans and all these everybody shat on it right so i expected this to just blow my mind and it, it was very subpar and for all the hype that this figure got i was expecting him to be able to do a lot more he can't chamber his his weapon correctly his rifle correctly because his shoulder pads or pauldrons get in the way there's a lot of like the, the articulation is there but the way other parts of the figure are implemented it gets in the way and I'm seeing reviewers just gloss over them as if they didn't see the previous figures do this stuff right and as if they didn't see the uh, four inch versions that are alongside these giant figures doing all the same shit with similar sculpt because it's the same details and doing it masterfully. So, and I understand it's the company's first try. My issue is just that it was hyped up. 
I picked it up. I was like, oh shit. And then I was like, yeah, no. Mm -mm. Nah. So, yeah, this goes on the list. Nah. Mm -mm. So, I'm a huge Punisher fan. He's always been one of my favorite characters, and I've been waiting for this one for a while. So I get him, get the bike, sit him down on the bike, this shit happens. You know I, I'm not a huge fan of the comic book Marvel Legends because of this kind of stuff. So I call up Hasbro because everyone says, oh yeah, you know, Hasbro will just replace that shit. They give me the runaround. And I don't know what it is about me calling Hasbro. It, I don't even, I, I just asked questions. I said, you know, I bought this, got my receipt. Within a couple hours of opening the package, you know, getting home from the store, opening the package, he broke and all we did was sit him down on his bike. So they tell me, take the picture, you know, do all the rigmarole, write down the serial number here on the paper when you take the picture and show us the problem, blah, blah, blah. I do all that shit. It takes forever for them to get back to me. And then they tell me that they don't have any more. Now, rem let me let me explain and set the, 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 the you know, the, the, the mood, <laughs> you know, set the, the stage. I got this figure, I want to say the week that it was released. And so my Target store, the reason why I picked him up is because I hid him earlier in the week and then I came back for him and my Target store was sold out. And then the, all the other ones in the area were sold out. So I went straight to Hasbro. And instead of giving me a voucher or something like that, they told me they could send me something else of equal value. I said, I don't want something else of equal value. I want this figure. I am a Punisher fan. I don't want what random shit you're going to send me. So they sent me Professor X, a figure I've had for a while. So because of the bullshit I had to go through with this, plus the break, he's on the list. All right. Now it's time for the absolute worst. So a friend of ours hooked me up with the TMN, Rise of the TMNT sewer layer. Uh, their kids didn't like it. So they knew I collected figures and they hooked me up. So shout out to my homegirls um, and, and thanks to the, the folks on the free swap page. Um, but anyway, I didn't know these figures were going to come with it. And I can see why the kids didn't like the figures. The layer is amazing, but these figures right here, let me tell you. Ooh, motherfucker. I was like, mm, mm. I, this is how I felt. I wanted to just destroy them. They're so bad. I, I even me and Lil Strider just sat around trying to figure out what do they do well. I mean, forget the fact that I don't like the series, the new series. I don't like the art direction. Forget the fact that the figures just don't have the aesthetics down. They look like fan fiction, with the exception of Donatello. He looks like fan fiction, but elements of his character seem to shine through. You know what I mean? The expression having tech in different places you know with the goggles and even the uh the wrist mounted computer that's dope i really like that but you know character some of the character the rest of them splinter especially fuck fuck like and and and, and this is me speaking as a professional you know and i'm a matter of fact i'm just gonna speak as a geek who enjoys action figures how how the fuck the fuck did you get from that to that to that where you see all the things you know the the the, the, the what the fuck <laughs> what the fuck and then let's 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 go back into like specifics for figures action figures if you're a hero you know superhero fighter ninja whatever you would have weapons tools accessories and you would need to hold those things that's how you meet the criteria for being an action figure right wrong these guys hold fig their weapons like they don't want to be action figures. Do you see the grip? It's like two of their fingers want to be in contact with whatever it is they're holding at any given time. And then there's always one, the pinky is out. They don't want to touch, the, what the fuck? It's almost as if with Raph, he was sculpted only to to hold it, you know, through his fingers, like the, the, the Wolverine way. And then Leo doesn't want his sword, like what? Donatello's slightly better, but weapons just fall through their fingers. Splinter? Eh, there's no grip. None. These figures are trash. And like, I didn't even talk about articulation, but just pure trash. Aesthetics, engineering, accessories, because these didn't come with their accessories, but I have tons of accessories from other figures, and they didn't work. But it's a good thing that I can, I can, quell, I can quell my rage, because 
we are about to talk about the good stuff now. So let's get into the good stuff, the happy stuff. So Diamond Select made a John Wick figure. It's not in scale with other six inch lines, which you know is not an issue for me, but his facial sculpt, the articulation and the weapons, paint, everything else is just perfect. I'm a huge John Wick fan. I love the lore, love the universe they've created. I love seeing Keanu Reeves use unconventional uh, martial arts. I shouldn't say unconventional, but I loved seeing him use the combination of martial arts and gunplay that he used throughout the three films that we've gotten so far. And, you know, I can't wait for more. Um, I love the fact that he's about my age still doing this stuff and still looking good at it. But with the figure, the figure just captures the feel of, of John Wick perfectly without going overboard and, and missing the mark like Mafex, you know, and like Mezco, you know, where they did all this other shit. You know, you got the accessories, you got the clothing looking right, but somehow you missed the sculpt. Um, and it's not like one head works and then the others don't. This head is unmistakably Keanu Reeves and I love it. It's perfect. So props to them. So keeping in line with the last, you know, with number 16, let's move over to Marauders and Theo, AKA John Wick. So Marauders made their own John Wick figure. They got it out before Fresh Monkey did their agent. I think he was called Grim. Um, I can't remember, is Grim or Graves, something like that. But anyway, Marauders, John Wick, it's perfect. Nothing else to say. So, NECA, Broken Tusk, he is something, uh, a character I've been wanting for a while. I got Machiko a long time ago, and I had her paired with my AVP Scar, um, but I really wanted this guy. So it had been a long time coming, and then I finally got him. And uh, he's pretty perfect. Articulation, great. He's made of the stronger plastic. Um, I had a stuck joint, but after I kept him in the fri freezer for a little while, uh, got it unstuck, and... He's been perfect, so yeah, he's on the list. Love him. Joy Toy, Betty and her Viper team. And this is actually a twofer because I also have the uh, Black Hawk squad on here as well. I wanted to just say all the Joy Toy stuff I picked up last year, but these two I played with the most. Um, they're pretty dope. They're all dope. These guys remind me of the, the cats from Infinite Warfare, and I love that game thoroughly, no matter what the fuck the gamers, what they say. It's, it's a good story, well done, and this re helps you recreate those kind of moments and that kind of feel. So, yep, they're on the list. Earthrise Cliff Jumper. Now I had been waiting for this guy for a long time and the reason why he's pretty low on the list is because of how much this tiny motherfucker costs. But even in this tiny package, he's still a lot of toy, he's still awesome, still well done, still kind of scratches the itch perfectly when it comes to wanting a proper cliff jumper for my team. So here he is. Fortnite Dyer and Fable, or Little Red as I like to call her. Um, this, I, when I first saw these designs, it had me cracking up and it was like, you know what? In a galaxy far, far away in some alternate reality, these two could be bounty hunters working side by side. She could have beat his ass when he tried to eat her, or she could have tried to fight back and he was like, shit, I'll train you. You got spunk, kid, and you know? I, just the stories just wrote themselves. And it just cracked me up, and the fact that he had like a knife and a fork, but I mean, the design aesthetic is just dope for both of them. And this guy, I mean, he's like worthy of Ninja Turtles. He's so dope. Say what you will about Fortnite as a game, these figures scratch the itch perfectly. I mean, they're, they're the odds and ends that we need to round out your collection in many ways, at least in mine, you know? The... Lost Planet, what is it, Mech Fans Toys, Lost Planet, not Diaclone collection. So I wanted the Diaclone figures or, you know, robots, super robots in gear. 
couldn't afford them because I was like, I'm not gonna pay that for these figures, you know? They're like six inch figures with vehicles and stuff. And essentially it's, it's the forefather of Transformers, but rebooted. And uh, yeah, my homeboy, uh, Them Guts, let me know about, he reminded me of these. I've seen them all over the place, didn't know what they were. I had a little bit of issue getting what I wanted, which was this, but eventually I got this and I love them to death. I've been playing with them like crazy. And my the bike and the small dude are on their way to you, man. You gotta give me your address. Hasbro Overwatch Zarya. Now this character, I never really looked at her in the game, but as a figure, holy shit. They really did the damn thing with her. Her stature, the sculpt, the details, the paint. This is like masterclass good Hasbro. And it's surprising that this 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 line failed, but I love this figure. I play with it all the time. She's just a marvel. I love her. Okay, in the middle of my video, I, I was moving figures around and I picked up this guy. I know this guy came out last year. I got him the beginning of this year. I got him just actually about a week ago or so. And I hate him. I fucking hate him. All he does is fall over. It took me a little bit to get him to stand up. But I had him up on a shelf with my other Spider-Man shit. And this motherfucker has fallen over like 50 fucking times. Like almost every day since I bought this figure, he has fallen over. It's like they didn't bother to properly engineer his stand, his feet, you know, so that he can stand up, simply because he's got two different shoes on, which is bullshit. And for all the amazing things they did, like, if you notice, all the joints are all closed up, there's no peg holes or anything, they really fucked up with just base level shit, you know? Like, I have this, this whole setup here is slanted, slightly, so that I can offset issues like this with a lot of figures because a lot of figures especially hasbro figures have this issue um neca is another company that has it where like the feet don't stay flush see what i mean like look at this so like the foot's on a ball joint it's got a swivel and all that and if you don't stand him the perfect way where weight is on one of the feet and not the other you end up with that shit like that but you notice, his foot's not flat. Sometimes you get that. Sometimes you have to, uh, and let me get my stand so I can use my hands again. But sometimes you have to uh, position him a certain way. Sometimes you have to work the ball joint, see? Like, finally. And that happened on camera, holy shit. So there's a swivel in here. This is a traditional um, ankle pivot and sometimes you got to work it to get it to flatten out so that you can stand him up now I mean with Casey he's got a lot of things working against him like this big ass backpack on his back but okay see now it's flat this motherfucker right here I mean look at his feet he's standing flat but for whatever reason, it's like the jacket throws the weight off or something. I don't know. And then within like five seconds of you doing whatever you're doing, he's going to fall over. And it's just frustrating. I mean, I know like right now, like I said, this particular ground is slightly slanted upwards. So I can, you know, when I have bigger figures or figures with like, you know, the issue where they're uh, the joints in their legs. Kind of like, let me give you an, an, an abject example here this is one of the greatest figures ever made simply because of the character but it's not really a great figure <laughs> i'm exaggerating i hope that you're catching my sarcasm but luis look at those feet and this is even after i spend the time to try to flatten these feet out ah that worked but you see he doesn't his the, these feet don't stay they can't move up properly because of how the uh, pants leg is sculpted so when I have this um, piece of you know part of what is this poster board on the ground 
Don't be surprised if you see... Look, look, look at him. Look at him. Look at him. You see that shit? Anyway, don't be surprised if Mr. Parker decides to fall over. If you look at his feet, he's leaning forward. Look at, look at his whole body. He's slightly leaning forward. Because his feet are not flush. Jesus, I'm sorry. <laughs> I just... Anyway... This fucking figure here. Fucking guy. You fucking guy. I can't believe that. On here, it's perfect, but when he's on a flat, perfectly flat surface, no slant, no nothing, he gives me all kinds of trouble. Fuck, man. It's like, for all the good you do sometimes, Hasbro, I don't understand why you can't properly engineer a figure to do a little bit more. I don't know. I swear, there have been times where I'm sitting around, I'm watching, and there's other figures standing up on the shelf with him. And then, magically, I come back and he's on the ground. Wow. I'm, I'm amazed here. I'm glad I, I got that popped, because that his feet were not doing what they needed to do. But anyway, back to your regularly scheduled program. Hasbro Retro Spider-Man line. Um, I love these guys. Um, I never had a Peter Parker, never had a Mary Jane, and of all the Spider-Man figures, especially the um, my favorite Spider-Man, which was the Amazing Spider-Man 2 Spider-Man figure, I think that they finally made the best Spider-Man Hasbro has ever produced. He's super ridiculously poseable. He pretty much has all the little isms and you know details that you need to have fun with him and uh yeah man i can't not play with this guy I play with him all the time and to have peter parker just it just sets it all off along with mary jane it's, it's amazing hasbro lightning collection uh, power rangers lightning collection uh red ranger from lost galaxy this is leo um i know a lot of people don't give a shit i love lost galaxy it's one of my top if not my favorite season um, and it's just because it's fully out there. It feels more like classic Toku than many of the other seasons of Power Rangers because it's not related to the other series at all, except for the fact that you got multicolored Rangers and, uh, you know, it's Tokusatsu. And then I had the original figures back in the day, shit, 20 year old me. And I was really geeked about them. And, and I went through a weird, like, do I like the Charlie Brown zigzag? Do I hate the Charlie Brown zigzag? I don't know. Like, I went through this weird mode where I was like, they're not even trying. And then it grew on me. And the stories worked so well. But to see the evolution from Bandai's version all the way to what Hasbro's doing right now, it's just like, man, it's bringing a smile to my face. This is, this is that feeling I was talking about in the beginning that, you know, many of us get from collecting figures we do it because it makes you feel like a little kid and you're seeing the things that you like uh presented you know in a new form in three dimensions and it's dope to see him without his helmet and it looks like daniel slavin so yeah they did an amazing job there's nothing more for me to say about it i mean even the sword is the right colors you know the gold on the the, the hilt the silver blade with the little details that you see closer to the hilt, the medallion with the with the lion on it, and the white handle with the zigzag, and then the gold pommel. Like, what the fuck? They, they caught all the details, and Hasbro's terrible at that stuff. So props to them for that. Okay, figure arts. Vega and Bison, or Vega and Balrog, depending on what country you're in and if you know your Street Fighter lore. These guys blew away the soda versions um, in, in, in many respects. I won't say completely. The Vega definitely blows away the soda Vega. He's so much more poseable. Uh, the colors are more vibrant and everything. Whereas the Bison blows away the Storm one that I used to have because it does some of the same things, most of the same things, but in a sturdier fashion. It's just a better, more well-engineered figure. And it does the job of giving us a bison figure that's really poseable. So props to them for that. Here are two figures that I never thought I would see on my shelf. And I have 
the uh, and I, I, t I had just finished doing a video where I told you guys if you can't find this Krang look for the classic one because it's bigger and it's just as well done and then I my, my son my younger son happens across this in Target randomly so I had to get it and right before I got him I had found Super Shredder online on eBay for forty dollars or so it was well under the, the the or maybe it was 50 I think it was under 50 and I was like what are you kidding me and I had the original one and it sucked he was pudgy and short this that thing is a thing of beauty and then Krang like look at this he even has a little butt like re poop release plug thing on his back like what is that poop for the Android or is that poop for the uh, for the brain like what I don't know, just all the detail and just the line. Man, this is just amazing. I love it. Siege Omega Supreme. <laughs> I almost blanked for a second. I don't know how I could blank on something so massive. And like, for me, I don't have all the rest of the massive Transformers characters from Power of the Primes and Titans Return or whatever. This is the biggest one I have right now. I'm still trying to go back and get uh, Trypticon, but this guy just presence. He's all presence, and the transformation is fun, and he still dwarfs my larger figures, you know? So Hasbro doing this up and not charging you an arm and a leg, it feels like that big toy you get at Christmas time. I don't know, it's amazing, and it, it's, it's what I collect for, this kind of stuff. Now, before we go any further with the top ones, let's get into the honorable mentions. I'm gonna get them out of the way before I do my top five. Um, Hasbro's uh, Deadpool movie series cable. Love this figure, the sculpt, the details. I went through some crap to get him though because someone had, you know, stripped him of all his gear. But I got one, and I like him a lot. The uh, the Marauder from Doom by McFarlane. Um, this was probably the second thing from McFarlane in recent years that I picked up, and I love it. The only thing I hate is the material that the axe is made out of, or at least the handle. It's too rubbery, so it's not quite what I was expecting. But he's pretty dope. Tall and just imposing and evil as fuck. He just looks perfect. Now I just need a freaking Doom Slayer. That's all I need. But anyway, he makes the list. Uh, evil Dead Ash from uh, NECA. Another NECA figure. Uh, he would have been uh, in the list proper, but... His joints are really stiff and popping that hand off is scary as hell and the chainsaw is too brittle so he didn't make the proper list but he's still fun. Earthrise Optimus Prime. Now you know me every list would have Prime and probably Batman if I was like every other channel but you know I was deprived of Prime as a kid so whenever I see him I have this need to get him so he had to be on the honorable let mention I couldn't put him on the list proper but besides that little issue it's just a really well done figure everything that was great about the siege version is great here and some things they improved like all the back kibble so you know he's on my list of honorable mentions motu classics tila not the ultimates the classics version the original one maddie collector i tracked this thing down <sighs> beginning of the year paid way too much for it and i love it <laughs> i was i was hoping that I would have gotten the uh, Ultimates one, but I mean, this is good enough, you know what I mean? Um, I do have Battleground Tila, but I had waited so long to find this and, and get it for a good price, and I got it for the best price I could find it for at the time, and the fact that I paid so much for it is why she's on the honorable mention and not in the list proper, because as awesome as a figure as she is, I paid too much. Oof, paid way too much, but anyway, she made the list. Hasbro's Power Rangers Lightning Collection Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Now these guys are on the honorable mention because uh, a couple of them showed up on last year's list, but uh, or year before last's list. But um, I went through so much to get these guys uh, and finished the collection. And last year I completed the collection. If I didn't go through as much as I did trying to hunt these guys down and dealing with Hasbro's BS, you know, their customer service BS, they would have made my list proper. So they're here on the honorable mentions. Figure Arts PS4 Spidey. Love this figure. Um, he's just not easy to pose. I mean, 
it's strange because figure arts typically are easy to pose, but there's aspects about him that you have to be careful about or you will break him. And for me, that makes him not as much fun to play with, but it's a great figure. I still play with him a lot, so gotta mention him. And of course, because you know I am a fan and this is what I started with and this is something I've been waiting for for a long time, we had to have an obligatory Batman on this list. And the uh, Supreme Knight has to go on the list. I, uh, I finished the review just a little bit ago, so you'll see that up soon. But he's such a fun figure, and it's something I waited for for a long time. And you know Mezco has a habit of making us wait for like the real good Batman figures. But um, yeah, he's quality, so I had to put him on the list. I'm kind of surprised that he didn't make it into the list proper, but you know, here we go. So let's get into the top three. All right, so the uh, NECA, Splinter and Casey Jones. I didn't do their whole packs because I got the Splinter pack for Splinter. I didn't really care so much for Baxter. He's an awesome figure though. Um, and the Casey I got for Casey, not that busted ass foot soldier that he came with. Nice prop, but it's not really, it almost doesn't count as a figure. So paying double because it's a two pack feels like a cop out. But these two by themselves, especially Casey because the old Casey wasn't very posable and the old Splinter wasn't either. This, this is like the stuff dreams are made of because we're when we were little kids we, we had to make do so seeing this just warms my heart and that's why they're up here on the list. Now number two came as a complete surprise to me because I didn't even know I was getting them and that is the Mezco uh, Magneto. Um, I got this for Christmas. My in-laws actually got them for me and typically they get me tools. <laughs> they get me you know, tools and socks for Christmas. So to see them get me a figure, and then one I actually was trying to get at some point, it blew my mind, but the figure itself, it captures everything. It's like kinda sorta Ian McKellen, kinda sorta whatever the comic book version was based, whoever it was based on, Richard Gere, or something like that, but you can see it all there, you know? So I, I just, I can hear Ian McKellen's voice every time I look at this figure, and I see the mannerisms and everything, but he's comic book accurate with the suit. And then as usual, with many Mezcos, not all of them, you get accessories that just accentuate how dope this figure actually is. So I am kind of blown away at how little attention this figure gets. You know, people, the, the, the fan base out there seems to be kind of weird with what they consider the best. You know, it's like they need a whole ton of shit in the package that's inconsequential and may not work very well. And then they don't give props to the figure as it is. But uh, I was blown away and I love it. It feels like an, a, a come up. And I had the Marvel uh, Select one before this. So there's that. But uh, yeah, this figure is not a slouch. Um, don't believe all the weird reviews out there. Check him out for yourself or not, you know, but I think he's dope. Super dope. And my number one figure of last year, another Christmas present, is the Mezco Black Panther. I know a lot of people said he was just a mediocre release. It's the best Black Panther out there. And I have so much fun with him. Posing him is good. He's not like as posable completely as probably your Mafex or your uh, the the SH figure arts or even the um I think he's on par with the figure arts but he's not as posable as the uh, Marvel Legends one in the shoulders but just about everything else you can do and you can just look at him and see that the likeness is super on point the costuming details the stretch of the fabric you know it's perfect the fact that he comes with the short spear and the shield which you know I know the Mafex one has it too it just it looks right and I've seen photography where it fools your eyes into thinking that this is not even the photography so I don't know man even the Zosha uh, information that's on his mask itself the details are all there in spades so yeah this guy blew me away and uh, yeah I was surprised to get it because again my in-laws and my extended family usually get me like you know things that I'm uh, you know things that could come in helpful that I'm not necessarily I'm not necessarily looking for I could pick them up myself and I usually do and you know for them to actually look and see oh this is something that he was looking for for you know for Christmas and pick that up for me that's uh, it's a lot so I'm really geeked to have this thanks bro um, 
And uh, yeah, I enjoy playing with that guy. I play with him all the time. Just seeing him with my Dora Milaje is just like, what the fuck? This is nuts, you know? And I've, I've, I got that whole wave. Um, I got a bunch of Doras. I'm still, I need a few more. Um, and then I'll be happy completely with my, my Wakanda little setup. But uh, yeah, those are the figures that, you know, helped me get through last year. Um, it was a shit year when it comes to a lot of things. Luckily, my family was happy and healthy and, you know, work continued all through the year. So I don't have very much to complain about. You know, collecting got out, is, has gotten out of hand because of the uh, pandemic. People are just fucking mercenary with their prices and shit. But these, I, I managed to get all of these at a decent price without breaking the bank and, you know, have fun with them. And the figures lasted, nothing broke. And, you know, I, I just... I gotta be happy about that. So, um, in the comments, of course, let me know you guys, you know, your picks. Uh, let me know, uh, you know if you guys had similar uh, stories with some of your figures and stuff. And, uh, yeah, that's gonna do it for me. That's the final video referring to 2020. That's it. This is the last one. And now, going forward, we actually go forward. So, um, as usual, that's it for me. You guys have been great. And... Peace outside.